As folks are working their way through writing the literature review, I wanted to provide a couple of concrete examples of some of the writing conventions, and I'll use a, an example here um, as we go through. So this here is um, one of the um, thesis is from the Digital Commons. Specifically, I went to John Budge's one here, and uh, so that's the one I'm looking at here. As you can see, I'm early into the literature review, so I'm 13 pages into the entire thesis, which means there are 13 pages into the entire document, I should say. Uh, you'll notice it's actually page 11 that I'm on because there's some front matter content in there. Um, so this is going to be fairly early into the actual literature review. I think it's the second or third section uh, that's there. But what I want to sort of break down for you is some of the things that John has done here in terms of the writing conventions. So if you look at this here as a section on the importance of differentiation in the classroom to strengthen student achievement. And he starts off by saying, um, you know, researchers who have studied the effects of differentiation on student achievement universally agree on its positive impact. And because he started his topic sentence with this word here, researchers, that signaled to the reader that he should have multiple citations here. So you can see what he's done is he's listed off all of these. Then what he does is he actually goes and uses one of those citations, so in this case the second one that he's got listed here, um, and he provides a specific example of this, and in his case he actually quotes from it, um, and then pulls a second sentence that comes out of that particular um, document as well. So those two sentences there that I've got highlighted are both from that single source. You know, so you've got a topic sentence that has these multiple citations, and then you've got a paragraph that you know has a specific example, and they're using one of those citations. And in some cases, you'll see it's using some you know different citation that's there. I will be honest and say that you know this paragraph probably could have been improved by providing a second example or sort of developing it out a little bit more. I'd say it's you know a touch underdeveloped as it stands now. And then you can see here. Um, you've got a, um, a summary sort of transition sentence. You know, John is basically setting you up here to um, take you to the next point where he says teachers are constantly struggling to find ways to engage, motivate, and improve all of their students' understanding. Differentiation can help. That's, you know, a pretty good summary of, you know, what those three or four authors that he cited uh, have to say about differentiation. Now, if you look at the next paragraph, you'll see he's using a, while it's a topic sentence, he's also using it in a transitionary format. So you can see the theory behind differentiation stems from the zone of proximal development. And this whole next paragraph is about the zone of proximal development, but you can see how the topic sentence in this paragraph actually ties to the content of the previous one. So as a reader looking at this particular uh, topic, you can see John's thinking in terms of how he connects differentiation with his conversation or his discussion of the zone of proximal development. So you know, he basically goes through and gives you essentially a statement about the zone of proximal development, and then t he has a block quote here from Vygotsky uh, that, you know, essentially details out the zone of proximal development. And now he's going back to that original citation that he had actually used with differentiation. So trying to, again, tie that idea of differentiation back into the zone of proximal development. And if you notice how um, he sort of, you know, concludes this, it's another good sort of transition sentence that he's got here. A differentiated classroom is student-centered. And what you'll note now is as you move into the next one, he's actually using a, a direct quote from one of the pieces of literature as his topic sentence. Tomlinson described differentiation as a classroom practice with a balanced emphasis on individual students and course content. Um, you know, so you can see that that sentence that I've got highlighted there, differentiated classroom is student-centered, was foreshadowing 
part of Tomlinson's argument here that he was stressing upon. That idea of, you know, that focus up on the individual student or that it's student-centered. Um, then he goes through and provides another block quote. Actually, it's a list of seven elements uh, that um, Tomlinson had there. And then he sort of tries to summarize that list of seven with the use of a third citation now in this particular paragraph. And as you can see here at the end, he's again providing that sort of summary kind of statement. The result was shown to increase student achievement across all levels. Um, moving to his next paragraph, you can see he's got, again, a topic sentence that has multiple citations. Studies have indicated that the practice of differentiation is an effective strategy. And in this paragraph, he does a particularly good job at actually sort of using what I'll call transitional phrases. So instead of just, you know, using that topic sentence that he's got there and then providing one piece of literature to support it and another piece of literature to support it. He has these little just statements and most of the cases they tend to come at the beginning of the sentence but it just adds to the readability so that the ideas flow. So studies have indicated that the practice of differentiation is an effective strategy. For example, and then he goes and describes one example. In addition, providing a second example that's there. And you'll note following that there's in another example. So he's using those kinds of phrases to move you from one piece of support for his topic sentence to another. Now as with the first paragraph where I suggested it was a little bit underdeveloped because it could have had multiple pieces of support, this particular one here, while it has multiple pieces of support, you'll note there's no sort of transition or summary sentence at the end and because it's actually at the end of a section here because as you can see the next section is the importance of technology in the classroom to boost student achievement um, it would have been useful for John to add a sentence or two here that um, summarized sort of what he wanted them you know, to walk away from with this particular section but also then transitioned from this section to how he was tying the importance of technology in the classroom to this idea of differentiation and student-centered learning. So that's just one section that we have here in the digital comments uh, from one student's thesis. As you can see, there are a number of different strategies that he's employed here to both, you know, uh, uh, create the flow in his uh, writing and to connect the reader from one idea to the next. And these are the kinds of things that you want to be striving for in your own writing.